Welcome back to Rooster Crow on TV. Guys, it's been a minute, but we're back. All right, guys. Hey, listen. I got this little clip for you guys to listen to real quick or to watch. And then after y'all listen to it, we're going to talk about it. This clip is really about what's for anybody who ever thought about moving down south, especially to like the Florida area, Orlando area. I relocated to the Midwest now. But whenever people hear that I'm that I came from Florida and now I live in the Midwest, in the Midwest, they always ask me like, "Are you crazy? You left that good weather for this and that and the third? Well, check this out. I'm gonna let you watch this and then we could talk about it. All right? From the Orlando Sentinel Studio, this is Orlando Sentinel Now. So, Scott, your column starts out with Orlando's dirty little secrets out, and we're talking about the struggles of low-wage workers here getting some national attention. Yeah, that's right. And interestingly, a lot of this story takes place in the same city that Steve was just talking about down in Kissimmee, uh, where Joe Biden was visiting last night. And this is something that really is not a secret to uh, a lot of people here in Orlando, and certainly not to us at the Sentinel. Rich, I know you worked on a, a project that was called Laborland, basically about the workers who make tourist dreams come true, but live in poverty, it's often in motels, or sometimes homeless, sleeping in their cars, uh, or who just eke out livings in, in you know, apartments or things like that, but very rarely getting ahead. Uh, this is something we've known about for a while. I'll submit that uh, our community hasn't done much about it. And in fact, to show you, about 20 years ago, the Sentinel did a series called One Ticket Town. I mean, it, it was the same idea two decades ago. It was saying we've only got one ticket, and it's a pretty crappy one. Well, economically, anyway, uh, we rank dead last, 50th out of 50 among uh, major metros for median wages. We've known this for a while. The Washington Post recently uh, came down, uh, went to one of these motels down in Kissimmee. And frankly, uh, it seems like the author and the Washington Post national audience were horrified at what they found, including uh, the story being told through the eyes of a 17-year-old who works nights at Taco Bell and has lived in cheap motels and heard gunfire throughout the night uh, ever since she was 10 years old. Uh, what we have gotten pretty numb to, a destitution, a sort of human condition that I think Central Floridians have sort of said, oh yeah, that happens. Most of the rest of the world was pretty shocked by it. In fact, uh, readers donated $80,000 just to help that 17-year-old after the Post story. You can go back even decades and you can see the stories. And I mean, anyone that's covered this, and, and I think that was one of the more eye-opening things is that you could just change the dates and it was a lot of the same topics. And I think that's the frustration, I think, as individuals here in the community that have lived here just to know that nothing really has changed nothing has happened and, and this past story talked about it being orlando's future but i mean even your column pointed this out this is not orlando's future this is orlando you're exactly right rich the headline for the piece and it was very well done it was powerfully written it was a gritty and re guys i'll put the rest of this video down in the description box but let's talk about this for a second man I stopped right there for, for, for a reason, you know. Like you heard the man said, you know, a lot of people know, like, this is not Orlando's future. This is Orlando's now. This ain't new. People living in hotels. And I don't know what the palace is, you know. It's been going on for a long time. And those numbers that you see, those wages, for you to be getting that, what was it, 15 something? Man, that's manager status, man. You got to be high up there, man. A lot of people not getting that right now in Orlando. A lot of people, you know. So like I was saying, people always ask me like, why did I leave uh, the Midwest and and why did I, you know, why did I, why did I leave down south Orlando? And am I crazy for trading in that, you know, that weather and this and that and the third? Well, I left for personal reasons, but leaving Florida, right? And going to like another state, you know, like somewhere in the middle of America, or like just just anywhere, like somewhere farther away from Florida, you know, it's almost like going to another country, because you realize that everything changes, you know, wages changes, you know, a lot of things changes, man. And in, in other states, you're respected more as an employee than you are in Florida, you know. So after like experiencing this, why would I want to move back to Florida? First of all, if I, I move back to Florida from, from where I'm at right now, it'll be a it'll be a pay cut. I don't want to take a pay cut for no sunny weather. You know what I'm saying? I like how I'm living now. I wasn't living like this when I was down there. I was struggling when I was down there. I'm not struggling where I'm at. So the real reason I made this video is to tell you guys this. Being that I grew up in you know, down south 
and I kind of know what's really going on in Florida, I'm going to tell you this. And I remember when I was a kid, my older brothers, uh, my older brother used to go to, uh, and his friends, they used to go to uh, P.I., Pleasure Island. Sometimes I'd get a chance to go with them, but I was a youngin', so you know what I mean? I'd tag along, do my little thug or whatever. But um, they used to meet these girls, you know, and they would bring these girls back home. We'll bring these girls home, and, you know, me personally, I mean, I was younger, so the girls liked to talk to me and stuff like that. But I always noticed, like, these girls came from across the water. Like, they either came from, like, like uh, Mexico or, like, Nicaragua or, like, you know, just somewhere across the water. So one day, me and one of these girls was talking. One, uh, one of these girls, um, we were talking. And, you know, she just wanted to tell me about, like, like, the job and stuff and how she came here on some kind of visa. I'm not really sure what the visa was. But she came here on the visa, and I guess the visa was kind of like a contract so she can work at Disney, you know? And she was going to work at Disney World, and I guess her her wages at that time was like a few dollars below minimum wage from, from what I recall, because like it was like at least five or six dollars, you know? So it was a few dollars below minimum wage. So the real thing is, People who got major businesses in Florida, like, you know, like the celebrity in chief, he got a hotel over there. And one of these young ladies were like, a, you know, a team member at one of his hotels. So they'll go across the water. These, you know, politicians or whoever it is, like, you know, that, that have hotels and stuff in Florida, they'll go across the water and they'll get these people to come over here and work for below minimum wage. So, if you're competing with guys who are coming over here and working uh, for money that's less than minimum wage because they're only here for like six months at a time, what chance do you stand as a resident who's living there 365? You get what I'm saying? If you don't get what I'm saying, drop it down in the comments and we can chop it up some more. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to make this too long. I'll put the link to this in the, in the description box. But if you live somewhere right now and you're making it, don't downgrade for good weather. Do not downgrade for good weather because Florida is not a place you go to to go look for money. Before I end this video, let me repeat that. Florida is not a place you go to to go look for money. You got to come to Florida with the money. All right.